Monday night on the hub. We'll recap the action from Dover, the Monster Mile. Find out whose championship hopes improved after taking on the Monster. NASCAR race up Monday night at 6 Eastern, only on speed. Who is going to tame the Monster tomorrow? I don't think he can. Miles? I don't think he can tame Miles. <laughs> That's a little bit of a mild name for a Monster. <laughs> it is. Watch Take a look at the hectic trip it was off of pit road see brendan gone there has to uh, swerve to avoid the 23 of jason white who had to swerve to avoid the 21 of ty dillon yeah he was trying to get around ty dillon and brendan was uh was in his way and you can tell it's a reduced speed but it's not reduced intensity these guys try to get every inch they can on pit road look at there hornaday barely avoiding a truck coming into its pit 21 of ty dillon stalls it as he was coming off of pit road. These guys figure out how to race even where there's a speed limit, Phil. Yeah, and, and you think about a caution flag being a break for these guys. It's not, you have to be on your game. You gotta get to pit road, get off pit road, get ready for a restart here. And that's exactly what's happening. Green flag back in the air. Nelson PK Jr. leads the field to the green flag. What a great jump by Nelson. I like the way he did that. He got way away from Austin Dillon up the track. Austin couldn't hear his engine. He didn't really know what PK was doing up there. And he made it work too. Grabbed the lead. PK Jr. out front. Austin Dillon dropping back once again. Hornaday moves up to second. James Busher third. Cole Witt in that fuel doctor number 60 up there battling for fourth. See Austin Dillon on the inside of Colwitt right now has his right front fender. Now he's been pulling behind Colwitt in the 60 truck. Two and three wide behind them as they're battling for position in the top 10. Talking to pretty much everybody down in, in the pits, and they made Austin Dillon the favorite to win this race. Austin bought into that, I'm sure, and he's running in fifth spot thinking, I thought I was the favorite. Did they not tell these other guys? Well, in the last race here, we noticed that restarts were the difference between winning and losing, and right now we're seeing the restart for Austin Dillon, he's not having good restarts. Dropping back at the beginning. Yeah, that wasn't a good restart. And James Bush did have a good restart that time. And he's parlayed that into a third place run so far. Johnny Sodder trying to find some space in here as he's right on the back bumper. That 62 of Brendan gone right behind Dakota Armstrong in the Ferro Gas number 98. Brendan's going to take that South Point Toyota to the top of the racetrack there, trying to get around the. Ooh, the 98. Ooh, we got real high there up in that speedy dry left over from Josh Richards. Joey Coulter down be be below Brian Eichler trying to make that move. Brian slides up the track. I think Joey's going to get that spot. Ooh, Brian was really loose, sideways sliding off the corner. Nose to tail. Coulter, Brian Eichler, Timothy Peters in the 17 on the bottom, the 29 of Parker Kligerman. Remember, Parker's already come to pit road, lost a lap with a flat tire, got the lucky dog, but he is on sync. Now, he did come in on lap 22 with all the rest of these guys, and now he's battled up and up in the top 10. It gets by Timothy Peters and Brian Eichler. Three wide, and Parker Kligerman's able to move in front of Eichler and the 17 of Timothy Peters. We talked about cup owners being here, Richard Childress, Roger Pinsky. Roger's name's on the side of Parker Kligerman's truck. Supports that team quite a lot with Brad Kozlowski, so I'm sure he's proud to see uh, see the moves this youngster's made early in the going. Calling a flat tire, getting a lap back, and now racing inside the top ten. We talked about it only being a matter of time before a guy like Miguel Paluto or Nelson P.K. Jr. could win a race. Well, right now, Nelson P.K. Jr. out in front by almost 1.4 seconds as we watch a great battle for the fourth position. Nelson P.K. Jr. has had speed this whole year. He's parlayed that into some great finishes, and I, I think it's just a matter of time as we see Cole Witt battle back on the outside before we see that eight truck in victory lane. I agree. There's like there's a handful of guys that we just know a win is imminent. When will it come? Tonight's the best chance for them because they don't have a couple of cats that like to stink up the show a little bit when they show up here. I think we've got about what six or seven guys probably that we think oh, yeah. could win win their first race in any given moment. Hey guys, there's only six races to go in the season. <laughs> They're all not going to do it, and we're going to throw Kyle Busch and probably Kevin Harvick into the mix here most of the rest of the races. But we know they can be beat. We saw Austin Dillon do it at Chicago Land. He was able to get out there and beat. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick when they were in the field. And here in July was a great race, a whole lot of fun. Kyle Busch did an amazing job late in the going, holding on to the lead and holding off his competition, but they were all over him. 
bunch of trucks that could have outrun him that night if Kyle wasn't Kyle Busch, and he was exactly that on those last few restarts and put those guys away. We were riding along with Matt Kraft, and he has scored 10 laps down. At the start of this race, his first move was to go back onto pit road. The vibration still there after qualifying. They thought it was in the engine. They decided now it's not in the engine. They've changed a bunch of things on that truck, but he's back out on the track, but he is still 10 laps down to the lead. Yeah, you guys remember that 33 truck? That is not Ron Hornaday. We've seen Ron Hornaday in that 33 truck for several years now at KHI, but they did a swap. He talked about it before. Ron's in the two truck right now running second. That's Kale Gale in the 33 truck. He's going to get to run this truck our next race as well at Las Vegas. Out in front, Nelson PK Jr. has a three-second lead over Hornaday. Then running third is James Busher. And Austin Dillon has taken that spot away. So third is Austin Dillon. James Busher up or down to the fourth spot. Cole Witt in the fuel doctor number 60 running in the fifth position. I think Austin Dillon is showing some of that muscle that we've known he's had this entire weekend. You know, and I've, I've been impressed with Austin Dillon all year long. He doesn't make many mistakes, if any at all. And that, that restart there, he didn't get a great restart, but he didn't panic. He just settled in, picking them off one at a time, and he knows he's got a truck he can win this race with, and he's being patient with it right now in the early going. He was the second fastest truck on the racetrack that last lap with a pass. So Austin Dillon trying to make his way back up to the front. We talk about how smart he is. He gets a lot of good coaching. Grandpa and, and Mike Dillon, all the folks on that team, they do a really good job of keeping, keeping Austin focused and in the game. And uh, he certainly does his job behind the wheel. Watch his head bounce around there. That's how rough this track is. And when we talk about this track being rough and being bumpy, that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, I like it. It's fun. It gives people chances to do something different run a higher lane like we see Nelson PK doing. Talking about Austin Dillon behind the wheel. Look at that arm full of wheel he's got. He's got his hand into it, but that's a, you can tell that's quite a ride he's taking. He's chased down Ron Hornaday right now in that battle for second. Good battle for fifth right there. Joey Coulter close to the inside of Cole Witt trying to take over that fifth spot. Austin Dillon looking to the bottom of the racetrack now to see if he can get by Hornaday as the battle continues on the left side of your screen for the fifth position, Cole Witt, Joey Coulter. Austin Dillon's probably thinking, uh, Ron, I'll run you down here. Give me a break, buddy. Austin pulled down to the inside, one lane down, down to backstretch, thinking, well, maybe Ron will lose me in his blind spot, but Ron Hornaday's going to take the line he needs to take into the corner. He knew Austin wasn't there. Austin just says, well, there's another way to do this, Ron. Ran a little bit higher, entering turn number one. Crosses over down the back stretch, trying to get that momentum. Able to get by Hornaday. Still Hornaday running down toward the bottom of the racetrack. Shortest way around. These guys are still running the la these laps faster than the pole back in July. Not quite as fast as we qualified today, but right now the top truck, fastest truck was Nelson BK Jr. About two tenths of a second faster than the pole in July. Great run by Austin Dillon looking to the inside now trying to take second away from Hornaday. I believe he's got him now Mikey. Yeah Ron's going to let him have the entrance into turn three and Austin will set a trail cut a trail for Nelson PK Jr. Nelson's driven away to almost a four second lead Phil running some really fast times out in front by himself. You can see the distance there lap truck between PK and Dillon but uh, got a nice lead. Sure does Austin that time while he was passing Ron Hornaday again the fastest truck on the racetrack Nelson PK has now led more laps tonight than he had led in his previous 24 starts Nelson PK Jr. leading in Kentucky. Welcome back to Kentucky Speedway caution has come out Blake Greenfield cut a tire and got into the wall. And because of that, the field has made its way onto pit road. Looks like we're having some more problems on pit road. I believe that is Ty Dillon once again. He's got her fired off now, though. Last time exiting his pit stop, it looked like he choked the motor out then. And same thing happens this time. Let's find out what happened on pit road. We go down to Herming. Well, James Busher had made his way up to the fourth position. He came to pit road. He's got a little bit of a balance issue. He's free on entry to the center of the corner. Then he is tight center out so several adjustments he took four tires sunoco fuel pulled a spring rubber out of the left rear and also added some wedge on the 31 ray 
Hermy, down on my end, I saw quite a few trucks going with right side tires only at the very front of the field. Uh, in the first pit stall, I should say, Austin Dillon came in second. They went with four tires, half a pound out of the right front. Austin saying he's still just a little bit too tight. And for the two, they went right side tires. So uh, a couple different strategies going on down here at our first round of pit stops on lap 43. Yeah, you see the 68 of Clay Greenfield coming off of the racetrack and going behind the wall. The damage to the left rear that was after the tire going down. You can see the right rear soft on that truck. In fact, it's tore all the pieces. Looked like maybe going down into turn three. He lost that right rear tire and spun him around. Yeah, a lot of damage to the back end of that 68 truck. So he is taking it back to the garage area. A few trucks in the garage area. Clay Greenfield, the most recent. Jones Garvey, Ryan Sieg, Josh Richards, Mike Harmon, Brent Raymer, all on pit road, are all in the garage area now. There's your Aaron's lucky dog. I don't like calling Jennifer Joe a dog, but she's sweet. She ended up making it into the field. Uh, one of the trucks withdrew uh, during the qualifying process, and so she was able to get into the field, and that's why she is on pit road now, having service done to that truck. Bundled up crowd here in Sparta, Kentucky. The temperature continues to go down. The heat on the track continues to go off.